uh, all of us can relate to this picture. That is the hospital setting, busy OPDs, busy emergencies, and lot of rush of the patients, all seeking the health at the tertiary care center or the facilities where the facilities are there for the treatment. But again, this is just the tip of the ice. Problems are beneath that, and there are huge problems which are not seen by the general public or as well as the doctor. So this is a situation in the, our hospitals nowadays, uh, healthcare in the country, and there is a need to think about that. So Pareto's principle says, that 80% of the healthcare problems are caused by just 20% of the disease. If we apply to other, other part, 80% of the healthcare problems can be solved by 20% of the interventions. Whereas for 20% of the disease for which the patients visit the hospitals, they require 80% of the investment in form of resources, equipments, and management. So this is a situation nowadays in the country where the whole of the expenditures are lost in managing the hospitals rather than concentrating on the people's health. So simple uh, innovations will change the lives of the people. And these simple innovations can be in the form of having ORAS. Oral rehydration solution was the one of the innovation which has changed drastically the life of the people with the diarrhea and dysentery. It was a life-saving. So technology, when we say technology, it has a different meaning. For an engineer, it means that there is a device or some software. For a medical person, it means say some drugs or medicine. For the layman per, uh, people, it can be just a drug or solution for their treatment. When it is applied for the healthcare, it has a different meanings. In the healthcare, technology has a broader connotation. It goes beyond those devices or drugs, it also includes a program, the way of delivery of these programs, education, awareness, and the guidelines under which the patients are being treated. So uh, if we want to use this technology, then we have two windows of opportunities, which are very important. One is the pregnancy and the childbirth, and the second is the teenage years, between 10 to 19 years of age. Now if we see the childbirth and the pregnancy, this is one opportunity where we can use the technology. But sometimes it is too late. When the woman becomes pregnant, it is just going to deliver the baby at the nine months. But the childbirth, along with the first two years of life, they are known as 1,000 days. This was the opportunity which was seen by the public health specialist, that they can target the pregnant woman during pregnancy and the child up to two years of age. The reason was that uh, the brain of the child is developed fully by the age of eight weeks inside the uterus. It is only the myelination process which continues up to the two years of age. But another aspect of this uh, development was dendritic connection. Every neuron has a dendrites. And the dendrites grow because of the interaction, experimentations, and learning and education. Now these dendrites keep on growing even lifelong. But when we start, stop using these uh, dendrites, our, we have the problem of dementia. So these dendritic connections are most uh, importantly utilized during the teenage years. Because teenage year is the place or the life, life stage of the person where he is more inquisitive, wants to learn more, wants to experiment, and also he is uh, fully brim with the skills and developing some other alternatives, pathways for his careers and the life. So this is a stage when he is most uh, thoughtful and also wants to learn to do in the life. So these are the two windows of opportunities, whether we have to concentrate on the 1,000 days of the life or the teenage. The basic tenet of all these two windows of life is uh, education. As we all know that the literacy means just reading, writing, and signing, and also remembering the numbers. Whereas education is a process which goes deeper to bring about certain changes of the application of that knowledge in the real practice. But the ultimate goal of the education is to bring about the behavioral changes. 
Behavioral changes uh, takes a very long time because they need a repetition, repeated efforts, so as to inculcate in our habits. And these behavioral changes are meant to be positive in nature. So that's why we adopted. Now nudging is a process in which uh, the person can be guided for some of the alternatives which are best for him or her. And this theory was given by Thaler and since then, in 2008, in a book published, named with the happiness, improving the happiness, healthy and their wealth. And this can be, nudge theory is one of the important concept behind the changing behavior. The decisions can be taken if we can direct the person for the right and positive decision. And here comes the role of the education. What we have done, that we have devised the method that is how we can combine the nudge theory with a innovative method of learning that is a flipped classroom. So we have devised this method of flipped learning, of flipped classroom. For that, our team has made an effort to talk with the stakeholders. So dis discuss with the, all the stakeholders. They were medical teacher, they were teachers in the school, parents, even the school children were invited for that talk. And we conducted a series of workshops after that. Now this workshop was targeted to develop a, one of this module which can go in this direction, nudging as well as flipped classroom. So what we, have, what we did, that uh, we devised a, this mobile app was available to the, both the parents as well as child. And we divided the children of the schools of Jodhpur, 30 schools were covered into two groups. In the one group, we delivered with the help of mobile and pre-distributed material. And the second group, there was a targeted intervention during the class. So the advantage of the mobile app and the pamphlet was that it was read equally by the child and the parents. The important concept which we have targeted was sexual and reproductive health. The reason for choosing this topic was that it has an impact on both pregnancy and childcare as well as the teenage. And the, this is a topic which is seldom discussed in the classroom, in the school education. Neither is it discussed by the health professionals to their patients. So we chose this topic of sexual and reproductive health to stimulate the students' learning in this direction so that they are more aware of taking care when they become the adult. While they are adult, they can take better decision if they are aware of the health of reproductive organs and the sexual health. So we chose this topic. This was, uh, this was, a, uh, this was actually the myths and merry taboos in the Rajasthan. But uh, because we took all the stakeholders along with us, so it facilitated our work. So uh, while doing this uh, intervention, what we did, that uh, the groups were, when the interactive session was conducted in the classroom, the classroom was more, made more interactive. And we used uh, not only the very short burst of lectures and short burst of activities, along with the clickers. And clickers, all, all, all we know that these are, they are being used in Khan Bane Karodpati. So these clickers, the, the students shown a lot of interest in that. The advantage of using the clickers in the educational process was that even the quietest children can be accommodated and engaged in the teaching. So in this way, the engagement of the students was enhanced. And also the, there was a heightened interest of the student to learn about the topics. The short burst of interactive sessions were conducted in a form of health belief model. That is, they were shown something which can go wrong and how it can be corrected. So in that way, there was a belief change occurs during this session. These sessions were planned in such a way that do not they do not disrupt the normal classes of the child and they are only of one hour duration. So in one hour duration, interactivity was in a form of use of the short burst lectures along with the clickers and also if any, uh, any student has a question, so they can ask on a pink slip. So pink slip was given to them, so they can ask any of the questions which they don't want to ask in the, uh, openly with everybody. And this was another attraction of this uh, classroom. That is, that is they, are, they are getting their answer after the session. Our team was there, and after selecting those questions which can be answered, which are relevant to their class teaching, 
that were answered. So this was the methodology which was used that uh, a pre prefabricated uh, mobile app was created and the students' classroom activities was used for active work. And at the end of that, there was feedback was taken. So feedback was in the form of a post-test as well as a focus group discussion. So in a focus group discussion, the students, uh, they come out with uh, some of the ideas and they, we prepared the themes of the topics which can be used for disseminating this information widely. And what we found out that uh, these 30 schools which are covered, they were more receptive and it brought about the behavioral change among the students. Not only the students, but their parents. And there is an increased health-seeking behavior of the parents as well. So what we found that uh, this strategy and this simple innovation can be used in all the other activities as well. And this increased the health-seeking behavior. What message we got from this, uh, from this intervention was that the students were very friendly to the younger faculty members because they can ask the questions more easily with the younger faculty member than the older people. Similarly, we devised another sessions for the accident prevention. So a similar strategy was used for the accident prevention. Now in the accident prevention, if we present the videos which are not like uh, tolerable to the people, so it will create a, some some negative effect on the child. So what we use is that we use the near, near accident videos, near miss accident of, the uh, of these uh, videos, which were able to like stimulate the students to change their behavior. Again, the same strategy was used, a small clips of the near miss accidents, followed by the clickers for interaction, and followed by the question answer. So in this way, in a one hour session, we could encourage and bring about the change for the accident prevention. All the regulations are in place, all the other technology are in place, but we found that the simple interventions, simple behavioral change using the nudge theory can change about the health-seeking behavior of the society. And we can decrease the visit to the hospital, hospitals and also they can improve their health. So this is uh, what we did and we found an encouraging result and we are very happy that the, our team is ready to do the other activities in the similar direction. We are also doing other innovations based on this principle of flipped classroom and the nudge therapy. Based on the, this theory, we have also made a nudge unit. Now these are, now this nudge unit is very important because it requires the expertise of the very younger generation because they are active, they are inquisitive, they come out with a better ideas, and it requires a creativity. So if the creativity can be created, inculcated, this will help in decreasing the health problems of the country. So with this, uh, I will end my talk. This is a small uh, intervention which we did, and we found that there is a lot of uh, improvement in the health of the society. Thank you.